लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन गुड डे एंड वेलकम टू पी सी बी एल लिमिटेड क्यू टू एफ वाई ट्वेंटी फाइव अर्निंग कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल होस्टेड बाई आई सी आई सी आई सिक्योरिटी एज अ रिमाइंडर ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट लाइन विल बी इन द लिसन ओनली मोड एंड देर विल बी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर यू टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन कंक्लूड शुड यू नीड असिस्टेंस ड्यूरिंग द कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल प्लीज सिग्नल एंड ऑपरेटर बाय प्रेसिंग स्टार देन जीरो ऑन योर टच स्टोन फोन Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sanjay Jain. Please, thank you, and over to you, sir. Thanks, Nivedita. Uh, good afternoon, everyone on the call. Uh, thank you for joining on the PCB Limited Q to FY25 uh, results conference call. Uh, we have PCB management on the call, represented by Mr. Kaushik Roy, uh, managing director. Mr. Raj Gupta, CFO; Mr. Sakit Shah, Group Head, Investor Relation uh, and ESG; Mr. Pankaj Kheria, Vice President, Investor Relation. I would like to invite Mr. Kaushik Rai to initiate the call with his opening remark, post which we will have a Q and A session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, and a very very warm welcome to all of you. and at the same time i wish you all a very very happy diwali and prosperous new year i'll take you through some of the major highlight first uh, for the quarter and thereafter we'll be happy to take questions uh, during the quarter our consolidated sales volume carbon black increased by 14% year on year to 1.48 lakh tons while consolidated revenue from operations increased by 45% to rupees 2163 crores on the back, on the back of better realization higher sales volume and revenue from recently acquired aquafarm chemicals consolidated ebitda grew by about 53% year on year to rupees 369 crores dbt stood at rupees 164 crores while pat stood at 123 crores consolidated debita per ton in carbon by business further increased to rupees 21324 of the total carbon black sales volume domestic sale was at 90219 tons while international sale was at 58474 tons export sales volume registered a strong year on year growth of 22% in q2 q2 fy25 now let me move on to segmental performance uh, tire accounted for 82383 tons performance chemical reported sales volume of 49183 tons while specialty sales volume were at 17000 127 tons which is again the highest ever in our history we continue to expand our product portfolio and customer base during this time we also achieved the highest ever power generation and sales volume during the quarter power generation increased by 25% from 167 million unit in q2 fy24 to 209 million unit during the quarter with external sales volume of 126 million unit as against 103 million unit in q2 fy24 pcbl's average realization stood at 3.56 per kilowatt hour <clears throat> coming to six monthly performance During H1 FY25, consolidated revenue from operations increased by 52% year on year to 4,307 crore from 2,834 crore, which was H1 FY24. Sales volume increased 19% year on year to 3 lakh 2,610 metric ton in H1 FY25. the consolidated ebitda for h1 fy25 was up 62% year on year to rupees 738 crore 
एफ आई ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज फोर हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी फाइव क्रोर फ्रॉम एफ आई ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज फोर हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी फाइव फिफ्टी फाइव क्रोर पावर जनरेशन एंड सेल्स वॉल्यूम ऑल्सो एंटर बाय अराउंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट इन द फर्स्ट हाफ ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल ईयर Let me now talk about Aquafarm Chemicals. Aquafarm Chemicals reported a steady performance during the quarter. Post the completion of the acquisition, we have been working on an integration process. The company is implementing various cost optimization and operational efficiency measures, which would result in better capacity utilization, leading to improvement in company's performance in coming quarters. In Q2 FY25, revenues stood at rupees 362 crores, and EBITDA stood at rupees 50 crore. The quarterly sales volume stood at 24,510 tons. The capacity utilization witnessed remained above 75 percent during the quarter. PCBL is amid an aggressive capacity expansion program in carbon black. water treatment detergent as well as oil and gas chemicals under aquafarm the company is working on strengthening its supply chain improvement in product mix and cost optimization cost optimization initiatives the long term prospects of all the business segment look quite positive and we believe there would be adequate business potential to sustain the growth momentum at pcbl research and innovation are important drivers of both technical advancement and business expansion as communicated earlier the company has made substantial investment in infrastructure human capital and streamlined processes this investment has significantly bolstered pcbl's capabilities in new product development customization and applications as well as process efficiency the carbon black capacity of the company stood at 7 lakh 70000 metric ton per annum pcbl expects to commission the specialty project of 20000 metric ton per annum in mundra and 30000 metric ton per annum brownfield expansion of carbon black facility in pcbl tamil nadu in Q3 FY25. The second phase of PCBL Tamil Nadu expansion of 60,000 metric ton per annum would take the total installed capacity to 8 lakh 80,000 metric ton per annum, with a green power capacity of 134 megawatt in FY26. Aquafarm Chemicals is implementing an expansion project of 38,000. metric ton per annum which is likely to be commissioned by march 2025 we aim to reach 1 million tons capacity in carbon black by fy 2728 possibly will surpass this target as well we are currently evaluating sites for proposed greenfield capacity this would help us to significantly increase our global market share now let me share some update on our recent joint venture in battery chemical space is specific to anod pcbl has executed a jv agreement with india private limited to form nanovest technologies limited for developing nano silicon products to be used in anodes of lithium ion batteries pcbl holds 51% and india 49% in nanovest technology PCBL would infuse dollar 44 million in Nanovis in multiple stages over next two years for acquiring IPs, setting a pilot plant, and thereafter commercial scale manufacturing facility. Currently, Nanovis is setting up a pilot plant at PCBL Palage plant, Palage site. The carbon black business continues to be on a strong growth trajectory and. is well poised to capture the growth in domestic and export market with new capacity additions wide product suite and a strong r&d capability the company continue to invest in growth innovation and supply chain capabilities across the world 
We expect significant growth in international sales volume to European markets. With planned capacity additions, PCB plans to ramp up global sales volume from FY26. With this update, I'll conclude now and open the floor for your queries. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assemble. The first question is from the line of Aditya from SMIF Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So my first question is on to the uh, expansion, which we are doing of 30,000 tons by next quarter. Uh, so has the work at, at the site been completed fully as of now? Yes, Aditya, uh, the project work is almost complete. We are awaiting consent to operate. Uh, we have already applied for it and we expect commissioning soon. Okay, okay. And sir, in this uh, plant, so it is an extension to our uh, uh, existing grades only or we are, uh, so recently we have also got uh, some patented products into the carbon black space. So uh, that new products we are planning to launch here or, or it, it is an extension of the old product? We have three broad portfolios or business segments under PCBL. Uh, one is specialty, which requires uh, completely different processes and reactor design. Uh, rest, all grades can be manufactured in this new facility. So other than specialty, specialty requires separate reactors. Currently, uh, we have uh, such reactors in Palaj and Mundra. Uh, rest, all plants can manufacture all the other grades, including the ones which we recently patented. Got it. Uh, so my next question is on to the carbon black uh, uh, EBITDA per ton. So I believe, sir, for the last two, three quarters, we are maintaining that run rate of 21,000 per ton. Uh, so how sustainable you see this number to be going ahead? Uh, can there be like, uh, uh, this can uh, fall down to your original target of 18,000 rupees per ton, which you were uh, alluding one year back. Uh, can that number be achieved or you think this is a sustainable number for now? So the global business environment even now is extremely turbulent. Last quarter, we saw the freight rates uh, moving up by almost 35-40%. And the margins that you see for last quarter is in spite of that. We not only believe that these margins are sustainable, we believe there is fair level of cushion for us to go up on margin as our product mix change, as our operating leverage improve, and we are still uh, working on improving our manufacturing efficiency, so yields also have scope to improve. But so suppose if, if the freight rates uh, so compress or they come down, which we, ha which we have started to witness on quarter on quarter that, spread, that freight rates are coming down, uh, still you will see that the spreads can maintain because so declining in, 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 in freight rates would definitely impact the spreads also of carbon black. Uh, in spite of this, you are factoring like this, the, so this number can be maintained. You know. Aditya, when we sell in global markets, we have to compete with the local manufacturers. So when freight rates are high, our margins get compressed. So in a low freight scenario, the margins would tend to go up, not go down. Okay. I was sir, actually mentioning, so when freight rates are high, so to pass on that impact, you generally keep the carbon black prices at a higher level, just to pass on that incremental freight. So in that time, generally the spread looks uh, optically higher as compared to a normal uh, so business environment. Uh, but still, like you are alluding to the fact that this number can be maintained. Yeah, I mean, when the cost of doing business comes down, generally the margins expand. And that is true to our business also. Got it. Uh, sir, on to the aqua farm, uh, I believe, sir, you were guiding earlier around 15 to 20% volume growth. Uh, in this quarter, sir, we had witnessed uh, only, uh, you can say, flattish volumes only. Uh, any specific reasons, sir, you can highlight for this flattish volumes? I think there are a lot of stuff that we are doing in aqua farm. We are primarily working on improving their cost structure, improving their 
operational efficiency and improving their capacity utilization. But all these initiatives will take some time. So the real reflection of such measures uh, will uh, flow into the numbers maybe after two, three quarters. So uh, current quarter, I mean, with all the global uh, uncertainties which are there, plus the turbulence in uh, global business condition, um, last quarter was largely flat, but we expect this performance to improve from maybe quarters going forward. Okay, uh, so just one last question. Uh, sir, outlook on the debt, what we are foreseeing, and in earlier calls, sir, you mentioned that uh, we are looking at around 2,000 crore of cash flow per annum. Uh, in half yearly, sir, we have made somewhere around 700, 800 crore. Uh, just want to know that, uh, so the 2,000 crore annual cash flow number can be maintained for the next two, three years, and uh, how that will be utilized for repayment of debt and for the further keeping. Uh, Aditya, when we spoke about cash flow, we spoke about how much cash we are going to generate over the next five years, and we did speak about a nine and a half to ten thousand crore of cash generation. But cash generation would increase every year with higher capacity, higher sales volume. So it will be not it will not be uniform across every year. So it will not be like two thousand every year for the next five years. Okay, got it. Right? Got it. But we will be generating enough cash flow which can support our growth plans as well as also help us reduce our debt. Okay, sir. Any debt figure you have made up in mind, like for FI twenty six twenty seven, what would that uh, uh, so what would that number be look like? We are not uh, looking at any absolute debt level, but we are not comfortable with our debt beta beyond two. So we'll try and bring it down to that. Now it might take a year more because we will not certainly compromise with our growth plan just because there is a little more debt on our books. But whatever uh, surplus cash that we generate beyond our uh, capital expenditure, that certainly we are going to utilize towards debt reduction. Not Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the update. I'll join Thanks, back sir. in the Thank you. The next question is from the line of Radha from BNK Security. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so my first question was that in the carbon black business, according to a previous presentation given by the company, so I just wanted to understand the demand scenario. So India, it, India is expected to create an incremental demand of uh, 4.5 lakh tons in the next five years. The Europe rebalancing of supply chain is creating an incremental demand of 2.5 lakh tons. And global market X of India, uh, if we factor in a low single digit growth rate, then that is creating uh, around 300 lakh tons of demand in the next five years. So from FI24 base, uh, PCBL's target is to uh, um, achieve another 4 lakh tons of volumes in the next five years. So from India, if we assume 33% market share in India, then we can get uh, uh, around 1.5 lakh tons from India out of the 4, point, uh, 4 lakh tons of incremental volumes that we want to do in the next five years. So for the balance, that is 4 minus 1.5, uh, can you uh, help us? Uh, can can you please help me? How the roadmap is? Uh, how much from Europe rebalancing are you targeting, and how much from the uh, remaining uh, global market growth? Uh, Radha, we are not targeting any particular market for for our uh, growth aspiration. It's a fairly large market. It's a fairly a 15 million ton market already, and mm -hmm. if you look at the global growth rate, long term growth rate has been around three and a half percent which creates a large opportunity for and scope for further, you know, uh, uh, increase in volume. Now, a lot of countries which has large consumption are not adding capacity. So the opportunity for Asian manufacturers become very large. Uh, we are a global company. We don't depend on any single market. We don't even depend on India for that matter. Uh, if you look at our last three, four years, ex uh, you know, export volumes, these have increased from around 150,000 tons to 250,000 tons already. And there is a large market there. We have invested heavily in our supply chain ability in the last four or five years. Currently, we don't have capacity to cater to all this demand which is there in the market, but the demand is there. So whatever infrastructure we have already created, that will support our growth plans. We are very uh, confident that growing at 10-11% volume CAGR in next five years is not going to be much of a challenge for us. We just need to have capacity. 
ओके सर सो जस्ट इफ यू कैन गिव दिस जीरो प्री बैलेंसिंग ऑफ टू पॉइंट फाइव लैक टाइम्स ऑफ रेस्टोरेंट चाइना यूज टू सप्लाई सो आउट ऑफ दैट हाउ मच कैन वी गेट दादा वी वी आर लुकिंग एट ऑल मार्केट यू नो विथ इक्वल आई मीन हैविंग इक्वल पॉसिबिलिटी सो वी आर नॉट फोकसिंग अवर ग्रोथ प्लान ऑन एनी पर्टिकुलर जोग्रफी uh we will remain flexible so wherever we see opportunity and we are trying to create stronger presence on all markets where there is a potential so europe remains uh important for us but this is obviously not going to be the only market so putting a number to a market i don't think that will be fair for us at this stage okay sir the second question is on the ketex front so in the last call you had highlighted that to achieve 2300 crores of ebitda in carbon black business so we need around 1.4 million tons of capacity so on a base of fy24 capacity of 7.7 lakh tons we need to add another 6.3 lakh tons so the capex per metric ton was also highlighted in the last call so that i have taken at 65000 per ton so that gives us a capex of 4500 crores only on the carbon black business so uh, but uh, in the call it was highlighted that on carbon black will be spending 2500 crores but i am getting 4500 crores so please help me where i am going wrong or uh, help me understand these numbers rata i think the numbers are not correct we did speak about about 400000 tons of additional capacity requirement So if we grow at about 10 11% every year by 2029 we will require another 430000 tons of capacity which will involve a capex of about 25 2600 crore and that's the number that we shared during last call okay sir um so lastly you spoke about the supply chain Uh, that we have created over the years so exports has become a very big factor for pcdl so currently 40% of our carbon black sales are exported so that has gone up from 30% in the last two years and in acpl also 90% of sales are from global markets so just wanted your thoughts a little bit about uh, if you could speak on how the company has uh, uh, improved its supply chain in the global markets both organically and inorganically if you can tell us a, a bit of uh, numbers in terms of how many distributors we have added in this region where we are standing versus peers and how we are trying to scale this up in the next 5 years uh will ratha last 6 uh, 7 years uh we have been investing in supply chain uh, bandwidth currently we have seven global offices we are going to uh, get another one i think in, in a month's time so we'll have eight then we have our own warehouses decanting stations even a r&d center outside india and i am only talking about currently there are 21 such points uh, which include this warehousing facility decanting stations and our offices in different part of the globe additionally we also have tie ups with dealers and distributors uh, but in all the geographies where we see large potential we have our own office now so only those i mean the smaller geographies where it is more fragmented still that we are doing through dealers and distributors additionally now with aqua farm coming under our fold they have equal almost equal number of touch points so together if you look at the entire supply chain currently we have more than 40 global supply chain points outside india and we are of course i mean going to strengthen it further going forward uh, we don't as i said we don't depend on india for our growth aspirations the entire world is our marketplace uh, so we are going to further invest in supply chain capability going forward okay sir so uh, just one last question uh, please help us understand the products in nano way so what is the usp of the products that we will be making in that compared to uh, the peers and uh, will there uh, or is there anyone uh, in india having such capabilities or will we the, will we be the only company having the sole advantage uh well rather so in battery there are three important parts one is anode one is cathode and one is the electrolyte cathode is where the reaction happens and the ions are generated 
and ions are stored in the anode part of the battery so anode plays a important role in battery capacity so the higher the absorption capacity of anode the bigger will be capacity of the battery and also with it will the lower will be the uh, charging time of the battery now conventionally anodes were made from graphite and graphite has very limited in absorption capacity what we are uh, going to produce under nanoway will be an additive which when mixed with graphite in a node will increase its absorption power ion absorption power which will increase battery capacity and which will also reduce the charging time of the battery now it's a breakthrough technology uh, currently while i would not say we are going to be the only manufacturer in this space a lot of work is happening globally in on different material we are working on silica and currently the material that we are going to manufacture is one of its own kind it's a like i said breakthrough technology this material is very expensive globally currently it is getting sold at 300 dollars a kg we believe that even if we sell it at 100 dollars a kg 2 years from now we are still going to get about 65% gross margin that's the kind of potential on the profitability side so this is it radha if i've been able to answer your question yes i understood i'll i'll study more on it thanks and all the best thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address question from all participant in the conference please limit your question to two per participant if you have follow up question please rejoin it the next question is from the line of kunal from kitara capital please go ahead so can you give me outlook for aqua farm for next 3 to 5 years as in how to understand the business and how is the outlook for the business and second again for battery chemical space as i rightly understand the revenue will start flowing from fy27 onwards so do we have any visibility for that revenue and like you said 60% gross margin so what cost advantage do we have is it the labor or the raw material uh, it is the process itself uh, kunal uh, so i'll answer your second question first and then i'll hand it over to our md to answer that of one thing um currently uh, the the process of manufacturing is extremely power intensive and consequently the cost itself is very high we believe that we can produce it at one fifth of the cost uh, so what this process will involve is conversion of natural silica or the regular silica into nano silicon particles silica is one of the most abundantly available material in the universe and therefore i mean very cheap and our process will not be as power intensive and therefore we will have the cost advantage right so that's on the this thing now on the profitability part um, we are starting with a 2000 ton capacity even at 100 dollar a kg revenue this 2000 ton full capacity will generate a 2000 crore top line so that that kind of and we believe that uh once this plant comes up which should be in fy27 it will not take us more than couple of years time two years time to utilize full capacity so by fy29 we should be doing at least you know 2000 crore kind of revenue from this uh facility uh on aqua farm long term business plans of course we have but what we are doing currently i think that is more important for you to understand i'll hand it over to mr roy to answer this uh well on aqua farm there is two parts to it one is the uh, Uh, Indian portion and the other one is the uh, US portion. Now, Indian portion they primarily they're into water treatment and detergent application, and US is more into the chemical for oil and natural gas production. Uh, coming to India, within detergent and water treatment application, there are three categories of products. One is phosphonate, which is kind of the base and fundamental grade. Uh, one is polymer. and the third one is the green kilts ecofarm currently is more focused on phosphonates but going forward our major focus will be on green kilts and polymer application for water treatment and detergent as well uh, the reason is polymer and green kilts both are more green product from the point of view of sustainability and will be the need of 
future for the entire globe. So therefore, the focus will move more and more towards green killets and polymers. And this will be driven primarily by the R&D coming out with newer products in both these categories, polymers as well as the green killet. And we see a clear, uh, very sharp growth opportunity in these two areas. Uh, while Phosphonet will continue to hold our position as a leader, global leader, will continue to expand Phosphonet as well. Uh, coming to USA, which is primarily for oil and gas chemical, uh, this is primarily as on today for US market, but we are likely to expand beyond USA to European market as well. That is our desire. Current capacity is not fully utilized. We are going to add further capacity as soon as we feel the current capacity is getting consumed fully. So that is the plan going forward. We expect to invest roughly around anywhere between six to 700 crores over a period of next uh, three to five years between Aquafarm and uh, USA. Aquafarm India and USA. Six to, seven, six to 700 crores of revenue. Six to 700 crores of investment in CapEx okay. over a period of over a period of next three to five years between India and USA. And, and what should be asset turn for the capex? What should be the asset turnover ratio? So how much revenue should this capex generate? Uh, it should generate about. So if you look at their current uh, fixed asset block, they have about 400 crore of assets, which is which can generate about 2,000 crore of top line. We believe the ratio will be largely same. Okay. And margin should be better, or should be the that similar range? Should See, historically, they have operated at about 20% plus margin, and with the new product launches, which are high margin, going to be high margin, we believe that we can improve it further. So, if I 29, we are targeting about 25% EBITDA margin from this business. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Jain. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, first of all, I have to be glad to the entire team. Uh, I, I, I got first to the book, bookkeeping question. Let me finish that. Uh, this quarter, there was a, a sharp drop in the other expenses on the standalone side. Uh, any particular reason, and this is despite the rate cost being uh, elevated. Uh, that's one. Number two, it appears that uh, there is some compression in the gross profit margin at the uh, aqua farm level and that's leading for uh, it are sequentially declining. Uh, any particular uh, uh, thing uh, happening in the aqua farm is general weakness in the entire market impacting as well. Uh, I'll answer the uh, other expenses part, uh, aqua farm survival strain. So our other expenses contain some of the variable expenses also, and volume this quarter was around 5,000 tons lower compared to last quarter. So there was a proportionate decrease there. Also in the first quarter, there was some shutdown that we had taken towards end of first quarter. Uh, so there were some repair and maintenance related expenses which were there, which obviously was not there in quarter two. So it was primarily on account of uh, that. Uh, coming to Aquafarm thing, I'll, I'll request Mr. White. Aquafarm, uh, the decline what we've seen, actually it has happened more from U.S. operation. Um, the U.S. Uh, market from the point of view of oil and gas sector is uh, is going through a very, very rough patch in recent times and the demand has come down substantially. And uh, that has put a lot of pressure on our capacity utilization as well as uh, on the on the on the margin, and and that is what was reflected in the number of what we have seen. But uh, our feeling is uh, it will eventually recover in USA, and that's all the more reason we talked about just now that we'll be expanding in the European market uh, for uh, oil and gas chemicals as well. So that is the reason we are expanding and we are going beyond because we don't want to put all the risk in the same all the eggs in the same basket. We want to kind of de-risk the whole thing, and therefore you're looking at beyond US market to Europe. Very clear. Uh, uh, Raj, just on the operating cost, uh, 14 rupees, uh, 50 pesos is uh, operating cost this quarter, and for less, last many quarters, it's basically we were hovering around 15 rupees and 16 rupees. 
Uh, there is a genuine reduction in the cost. It's more of an operating leverage which is playing out here, or uh, you feel that uh, we will again go back to 15 to fifty to fifty plus. Uh, so it is largely operating leverage. Plus, I mean, with all the investments that we have made in new business, we are also looking, you know, the scope to reduce our cost wherever possible. But uh, it is mostly the function of operating leverage. With higher capacity, we are getting that advantage. Very clear. Very clear. So, uh, last question from my side on the battery chemical side. Uh, How has been the response? Have we started switching to the battery OEMs, and are they excited with the scope of uh, integrating silico, uh, graphite in their battery? Uh, and anything on the market side will be really helpful. I, I think we are we are constrained to talk. Uh, there are some developments. Okay, that... there are a lot of excitement in the market, and we are in discussion with some of the. leading battery and auto makers uh, but at this point of time we are really constrained to share those names because of the confidentiality agreement but generally no no, no i'm not looking at names uh, uh, as in have they started integrating it are they started yeah, looking yeah, or yeah. putting it in a battery absolutely absolutely it has already started uh, so that you know joint development and how to use it what is to be done etc the discussions have already started and we are very confident that once we get the pilot plan in a year's time we will have uh, approvals from most of the targeted consumers great that's that's uh, and then these are some nice. of the global names you know these are some of the global names unfortunately we are constrained and not able to share with you at an appropriate time we'll do that so these are all big global names from auto and battery Very clear, sir. Very, very clear. That's that's loud and clear. Thank you, uh, thank what, you, thank you. Sanjay, what we will also do, maybe at a later stage, we will arrange an uh, in investor interaction with uh, some of the scientists who are part of this project. I think that will provide you with more understanding on the technical part of it and the feasibility part of the project. We would love it. We would love it. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Shet from Quest Investment. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, uh, Mr. Roy and uh, Raj. Good afternoon. See, my first question is related to the carbon black. Raj, when we are talking of 10 to 11 percent of course carrier growth for next four five years, in within that, if you can give some color, how much will be the specialty growth and performance chemical? So uh, the whole pie has the opportunity. So while specialty we will be maintaining about 10,000 tons of volume addition every year, uh, in rest of the portfolio also we are going to add similar kind of uh, growth. So when we say 10-11 percent, this is both the pies are going to expand by the same. Only thing is that the base in specialty is smaller currently, so specialty will become almost double in next four five years time. But this portfolio will increase by about 60-65 percent. So the volume okay. is on the entire pie. Yeah. Uh, the volume growth is on the entire pie. Okay. And performance chemical side, if you can give little more color, which I generally Again, believe I that uh, has a little higher profitability than the uh, tire grid. Is that fair understanding? Yes, that's more segmented market and carries better margins, about 25 percent more compared to tire, which is bulk business for us. So that will continue to grow at an eleven, or there is a room to improve the growth in a percentage. Yeah, more or less, I think the the uh, share percentage between performance and uh, tire grade uh, segment will remain more or less similar. Okay. See, Bharat Shah ji, you know, tire and this performance chemicals market are pretty matured and a larger okay. base. Okay. So what Raj talked about in ten, twelve, ten percent plus. Will be, you know, uh, naturally for these two segments will be around that. Uh, whereas uh, specialty, since the base is little smaller, the percentage terms it will look larger. Great. The growth will look little larger in percentage term. Okay. But as you mentioned, you know, every year we are adding ten thousand. Like this year, we are going to close possibly around sixty to sixty-five thousand. So we'll be adding another ten thousand. So number-wise, percentage number-wise, will be little more. But look at the whole pie. The point here is that we'll be growing in all these three. 
So simply you don't look at because that's not the right measurement. Uh, it depends on the base and the size. In specialty, we are growing. It is uh, comparatively smaller base, so therefore the percentage will look little bigger. Understood, sir. Yes. Now coming on to this aqua farm, when we spoke about this uh, 600 to 800 crore kind of a capacity over five years, and where we are seeing that postponement is a a polymer as well as green chale has a better profitability and better growth prospect so can you this capital allocation if you can give share some how much that we are capex we are going for this polymer and green chale side and some so that can be see these are all part of our innovation bharat ji now the margin profile even in the conventional business of aqua farm is good So I am, we are not saying that these are going to be exceptionally higher margin in this business, but then as a business we have to constantly move up the value chain and keep the business relevant for the customers. So all these innovations which are happening is towards portfolio expansion and also cater to part of the market currently to which we are not catering. Okay. And last question, Raj, uh, for you. Normally when the oil price is low or carbon black, I mean we have the working capital. comes down substantially so uh, anticipating oil remain in 70 to 75 range broad range how much saving that or additional cash flow can we generate from working capital uh, it's it's very simple math so uh, crude falls by 10% our working capital requirement goes down by around around 8% so so that's a very simple calculation but then uh, that comes assuming that we have the same turnover we are expanding uh, in terms of volume and that will also reflect on our top line so uh, the savings in working capital will also depend on the overall turnover that we are generating from business but yes the capital efficiency will improve uh, when crude comes down okay thanks and all the best guys thank you sir Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishan from JM Financial. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, wish you a uh, very happy Diwali. Um, firstly, on carbon black, uh, what was the reason for the sequential dip in overall sales volume, especially the export? Uh, Krishan, will you please repeat your question? Okay. Uh, so. Am I am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, you were audible in my. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I was asking uh, on carbon black, what was the reason for the sequential dip in overall sales volumes, uh, especially the exports? Your question is not clear to me. I'm asking, what was the reason for sequential dip in overall sales volume of carbon black? Okay, sequential dip in uh, sales volume. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So typically, uh, so Christian, what happens? Uh, most of the tire companies they take maintenance shutdowns during monsoon season in India. So okay. that was one reason, and and this is usual. I mean, every year you will see this happening. And okay. also last quarter, the availability of containers was a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, the freight rates also moved up because of that. So it also impacted our volumes in overseas market. Okay. So basically. Uh, some of the volumes were affected due to the uh, container availability, and some due to uh, let's say uh, maintenance shutdowns. Is that correct? Yeah, and overall, overall capacity utilization was still 94%. So we are operating at almost full capacity. Right? Mm, no, okay. And you know, you expect going forward, kind of uh, this this coming back to let's say. Uh, 154 KTPA and and higher, or or do you expect this to be in the similar range of 148, 149 KTPA? Yes, I mean the idea is to utilize full capacity, and we know the scope is there in market. See, what is happening is now we are left with very little capacity cushion, and therefore we can't commit capacity to the new customers, or even for the same customers, we can't commit more capacity to them. So we are awaiting new capacities to be uh, available, and therefore we are also speeding up our project work. So initially, you know, we had given a timeline of fourth quarter for this 50,000 and capacity. We kind of increased the pace of project work, and now we are targeting commissioning within this quarter. So that will also give us some more capacity cushion. But it takes time between capacity to come up and then getting requisite approvals from customers 
and being able to ramp that up, utilize that. But idea is to have more capacity with us so that we can also get into more contact with our stable customer. Got it, got it. Um, that's fair. Uh, and secondly, um, I think Kaushalta mentioned that uh, there was some roughness in the oil field chemical side, so the utilization was lower. So, uh, you know, what is the capacity utilization you are targeting in in Equa Farm for this second half and in the second six? Second half, it will improve marginally. We currently we are at about seventy five percent on overall basis, uh, India and USA all combined. Uh, okay. We believe that by fourth quarter we should reach around eighty two, eighty three percent. We are targeting a little more, but we have more confidence level at that level. But idea is to have full capacity utilization. I mean, this 75 or 80 or 85 is not acceptable in our system. Mm -hmm. There is a fairly large market, and all it takes is to spread out and uh, identify opportunities where these are. So our target is to reach full capacity utilization. God willing, we will achieve that in next few quarters, four five quarters. Got it. Got it. Um, thank you so much for patiently answering my question. I wish you all the best Thanks. for the coming quarter, and a happy Thanks, new year. Thanks. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhav from Fidelity Investment. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, so I just had one question. Basically, if you could just share where we are in the carbon black uh, demand supply cycle uh, from a next three-year perspective. Uh, there, is, there was quite a lot of disruption which happened uh, in Europe because of the Russian supply. And then China obviously had become cost uncompetitive in this space. Uh, so if you could just share some view uh, from a from a three to five year perspective where we are today. Thank you. So we believe the we believe that uh, now see so China was dominant and prominent and it will remain prominent because they have a large market, uh, you know, captive market only in in their own country. They account for almost thirty five percent of global carbon black consumption. So uh, the carbon black companies in China they will continue to produce and continue to sell, and when they produce they will also have some surplus that they will want to sell outside their country. Now, so far as cost is concerned, their cost structure is not what it used to be 10 years back. And China's stance also is today that we will sell uh, to outside China customers, but not at a price at which they expect, but at a price which Chinese companies want. So it has created kind of a level playing field. Having said that, not many companies in China are making money in this business, and therefore, possibly, they will consolidate further and we will not see too much capacity coming up there. So the market size will remain more or less constant or it will consolidate further. Russia is facing now sanction from the entire Western, Europe, Western European uh, Union. And consequently, and that was where they used to sell their surplus capacity. Now they are selling this capacity elsewhere in the world, mostly in Asian countries. But what will uh, this situation do to them is this will kind of reduce their further investment in capacity. Globally, only Russia and China had advantage in terms of cost. China because of scale and because of coal tar availability, and Russia because of its own crude. Now, if China is consolidating or not adding more capacity or not making money in this business, and Russia again is not making money in this business, and they are also kind of not adding capacity, the opportunity for the world becomes very large. Next three to five years, we are looking at with a lot of confidence that it will be a large opportunity for Indian manufacturers and a rapid growth phase for us. That's super helpful. Is there any other country uh, in the world where carbon black capacity is being added today? Like I think Indonesia, Malaysia used to add some small capacity earlier, but um, where is the supply really coming to service the incremental demand? Because it's, like you said, it's a 15 million ton market and uh, we might need 4 lakh tons maybe each year incrementally. Uh, so, who, who is building the capacity today? Other than India today, in uh, India and uh, China, I mean, when we talk about Asia, most of the other countries are marginal in terms of capacity. So, while small, small pieces of capacity will keep coming up, because these markets are also growing in terms of their local demand. If you look at, say, Indonesia or Malaysia or Thailand, these geographies are, these economies are also growing at a rapid rate almost the same growth rate at which India is going. So they will have their in, in, incremental demand locally, right? But in terms of catering to global demand, they don't have that level of surplus or they're not even planning for that level of capacity addition. 
So Indian manufacturers will have an edge over their other Asian counterparts. Got it, sir. Got it. Thank you, Master. Thanks, Madhu. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kush from Electrum PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Hello, I'm Madhu. Yes, you are. Go ahead, please. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. I said one question. So, what kind of growth we are seeing in aqua farm, considering the capex, say from SI twenty six, once things are back to normal, what kind of top line growth and sustainable EBITDA margins? Uh, growth uh, in terms of top line, we believe that we can grow at around seventeen eighteen percent uh, from FY twenty six onwards, and our margins. We believe that from next year itself, we will have around 20% EBITDA margin, which will gradually improve more towards 25% by FY29. So we will see annual increase. Okay, so answers. This last question. So we have seen uh, export grow year on year by 22%. So can we assume that some contribution was due to uh, increased sale in European region because of the Russian ban? Yes, of course. Our our share of uh, sale in European markets have gone up. In FY22, it was only about three and a half four percent. Currently, we are doing close to 21 percent in those markets, and the scope is much much better. We are constrained by capacity. Okay, so that's great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya from SMIFS Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the follow. Uh, sir, my question is on to the battery chemicals part. Uh, sir, you had mentioned that uh, uh, so this battery chemicals business will generate around 2,000 crore of top line. Uh, sir, what are the assumptions we are taking here in terms of the realization? We are we are considering $100 a kg uh, realization, which is around one third of the current market price of similar material. One okay, and sir, this is on to the capacity of of two thousand ton, right, sir? That's correct. Okay, and sir, similarly, how much would be the EBITDA margins? Like you have stated, so gross margins would be around sixty five percent. It would be around fifty percent. It will be because it's a small capacity. We don't uh, see any uh, kind of elevated uh, fixed overhead structure here. It will be a very lean structure. So around 50% should flow to EBITDA level. 55%? 50%. 5-0. 50%. Okay. And sir, uh, I believe so. Eventually, we are talking of around... Uh, earlier, we were stating that this capacity was around 3,000 tons, sir. I believe uh, in our earlier meeting, you had mentioned 3,000 tons. Now that size has been reduced to around so 2,000 tons. No, we are saying that our first plant will be 2,000 ton. Of course, we'll have to add another plant of equal size. And therefore, by 2025, 29, we should be doing around 2,000 to 2,500 tons at least. It can be even more. But the numbers that I'm sharing is for the first plant, first capacity which comes up. Got it. And from this pilot project only, we would be making around 400 to 500 crore of EBITDA. No, 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 no. The pilot plant is much smaller and this will be primarily used for sampling purpose. Okay. So 2,000 crore of top line, so roughly 50%, so 1,000 crore of EBITDA for the JV and 500 crore for us, for the pilot plant itself. No, no, no. So, Aditya, Aditya, you are confusing between the two. So we are initially setting up a pilot plant, which should come up in next 6-7 months time. We will use that for sampling purpose. That is not okay. meant for commercial purpose. Parallelly, we are also setting up a commercial plant of 2,000 tons, which should okay. come up in FI27, and that plant we will utilize for commercial sales. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this 2,000, uh, so uh, sir, onto this, uh, uh, so the technology is uh, we are already tied up with the technology. So what are the key challenges you see onto this? So if suppose we ramp up from 2,000 to around 10,000 tons. Any sort of key challenges you uh, so you foresee? The market is currently growing at about 25% CAGR. It's about 15,000 ton market for this material. Very few producers globally. Uh, no one is very sizable in this space. And uh, the price of this material is currently prohibitive. As I said, $300 a kg, which kind of also restricts 
uh, the growth, growth potential. We bring down the price, the market, I mean, the growth can explode from the current level. Uh, we have seen that kind of movement happening in the EV space and EV is not going to be the only industry uh, which will create demand. Uh, the power save, saving uh, you know, requirement across countries that is increasing and I think that will be one of the biggest contributor to demand for this materials. So currently, of course, we are focusing for you know, the first plant and utilization thereof. But I think in this space, the, the opportunity is much, much larger. What is, sir, on to that 12,000 tons, suppose if we commercialize it by 2030, so we can assume some sort of, uh, so 2,000 crore of incremental EBITDA only from this project? Yeah, so if we put up another 2,000 ton capacity, at full capacity utilization level, it should be giving us the same level of bottom line. Okay. Uh, sir, on to the aqua farm, sir, is, is there any split between the uh, uh, so value-added and, and the commoditized segments like the phosphonates and the shellates into the segmental basket? How they fit into the commoditized and into the, and into the value of the side? Aditya, nothing is commoditized. I mean, this entire portfolio is a very high level of complex chemistry. What we are doing is we are trying to create more sustainable material. But, but So that will be further moving up the value chain, but that is that doesn't make the existing portfolio or any part of the portfolio commodity. Okay. Right. And, and all the businesses will develop to constantly move up the value chain. Today, what is relevant, what is specialty tomorrow, tomorrow it might be treated as commodity as supply increases or as new technology comes in. So businesses will have to keep moving up the value chain and this green chalice and polymer polymers, these are all a step towards that direction. Okay. And sir, the backward integration into the yellow phosphorus. Uh, so when is the timeline we are planning to complete that? We are not doing backward integration into yellow phosphorus. Yellow phosphorus is a is a mineral, uh, right? So it is mined. What we are doing is we are setting up a, a processing or filtering plant, right, sir? I mean, what is right, it? Right, right, right. We are going yeah. to source yellow phosphorus. We are trying to tie up with uh, some of the miners, and then that will process and make it usable for uh, aquaform. That's the thought process. Okay. So okay. from rock phosphate to yellow phosphorus through proper process. That is what we are looking at. So part of the process, we will be doing that part integration for, but it remains a mineral, so it is mined, so we can't get into mining. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so first question is on the battery chemical side, on the additives front. So you said that the pilot plant will be set up over the next six, seven months. 